Hey everybody, welcome along. Uh, part 16 already. Um, it's still Saturday, November the 3rd. Um, this morning I did the, um, well, early this afternoon I did the uh, the tutorial for you, the part 15, should I call it, not tutorial, uh, on the uh, Street King. And now I want to show you how I do this um, colour modulation streaking, whatever you want to call it, with, with oils. And what I've got here is a piece of cardboard um, with some oil. Obviously we've got a blue, like a darker green, a brown, a yellow, white, a crimson and a bright red. Unfortunately this, this lighter shade of green had dried up. My oils are probably 25, 30 years old. So uh, yeah. Um, so the whole idea of this is what we do is we just dab it on and then take it off and leave a little bit behind. So if I try and zoom in now into this area here, what I'll do is I'll show you what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit on the brush not too much and I'm just gonna dab some spots on in various places now bits of this are gonna go off camera I think so I better um zoom back out a bit there we go if I if I just do that area there okay I'm sure you've all seen this before I mean it seems crazy me doing this how to do weathering thing but um well, it's not how to do weathering it's how i do weathering but it just seems crazy because these videos there's there's millions of them <laughs> uh so let's get a yellow now let's go for the yellow and you can see the cardboard is basically the idea of it is soaking away the oil because when you when you squeeze the tubes out sometimes the uh the oil comes gushing out on the tube at the end of the tube should i say Let's get some red. You're probably thinking, oh my god, you're covering this model in coloured dots. What is going on? Let's put some down here, a bit in there, a bit in there. Okay, I'm just staying behind this panel line here at the moment. Um, let's get some of this green. A bit too much on the brush there. You just dab it, you know, anywhere you want to put it, just dab it on. Okay, and then about a bit of blue. And this, um, this I find works particularly well on uh, aircraft. Aircraft wings, for instance, if you've got like a, a German camouflage with the, um, oh, what's it called, the, uh, what's it called, we've got the zigzags, um, that works really, really well on that. So, uh, like all the colours on there, let's, let's go a bit for this crimson, a bit of dark brown, a bit of dark brown and crimson, let's go for a bit of dark brown on its own. And what I'm doing here, I'm going way over the top, this is more than you would normally put on. Okay, so there we go. I've got my Christmas decorated Mark IV tank. And I'm going to leave that for about five minutes before I do anything. So I'll just uh, go off camera and do a bit more. Right, so it's about five minutes later. So what I'm doing is just dipping the brush and then wiping the brush off in some uh, odorless thinners. And just take most of it off and then I'm just going to very gently brush down and I think I may have done this a little bit too quick but let's just let's just keep going to see what happens okay I need a bit more thinners on that brush you can see what's happening here is the colors are the colors are all streaking And you're depositing it what it's doing is mixing up a, a sort of dirty mix of color and you'll notice that the you start to lose the um, you start to lose the bright colors and it all starts to turn into a dirty streaky mess 
The other thing you can do that um, I have seen done by people who are more professional than me is you can use the colours to add tone to the colours that are already there. So for instance the, the grey on here would respond very well to the blue. You get a very uh, a very interesting um, tonal variation which is what you're actually looking for with, with doing this you're after some tonal variation so it's not exactly the same as streaking but it's giving you the same kind of effect now what I want to be careful of here is ending up with just lines of paint between these rivets so I do need to go across and then continue to go down we can see down here the paint is building up on the, or the colour is building up on these ledges here. I'm being careful to um, not allow any one particular colour to stand out. You can see that also the wash is starting to come away from around the bolts as well. So you're losing the starkness there as well. So you can clean the brush off and then just... There we go, you see you get this kind of streaked effect. And I'll just continue and finish off this rear bit for you. You can also go up and down. And if like here you've got an area that you think is a little bit too green, I can take a bit of brown on the brush, tiny little dab of brown, dab it in there, dry the clean the brush off, and then work it that. So you can see that doing this. It's just an alternative to using the streaking effects. Um, for this particular model, I think I prefer the streaking effects, if I'm honest. A bit too much green in this area, I think. So there we go. So you can see that that's the effect you can get using the oils. Um, difficult to see while it's still shiny and wet. But uh, I'll come back and show you when it's all dried off. And there we go guys. You see the, uh, the oils have done their job there. I, I'm not going to lie. I have gone over afterwards with a little bit of um, the streaking effects. Just to take some of the, some of the, here it was very green. Here it was very red. Um, I put too much oil paint on there basically so um, yeah out of practice finish more kits Nigel um, so yeah the that's basically done now the, the top is um, is all done and dirty and everything so that's the streaking done I think the exhaust is pretty near finished um, there's the uh, the back end now with the dirty area here where the mud has come down now next is going to be pigments. Now pigments are something I'm not that familiar with. I've got quite a few, but uh, so um, so yeah, we, we can have some fun with them. I've got the thinner and everything, and I've got the pigment fixer. So yeah, let's uh, we'll, we'll wait and see what happens. But um, I'm going to use some pigments on here. I also need to do detail painting. I need to paint the gun barrels. I need to paint these bolts and then get some rust on them, I guess. Um, get some rust around these uh, eye bolts. Um, matte black out the, uh, the gun sights. Um, do something about where these would have pivoted around, these little, uh, little gun holes there for firing a pistol through. 
um, hinges. There's a lot of detail where it needs to be done yet for parts of the tank that would be used all the time. So, um, you know, even if it's only like, you know, had a seen a couple of weeks use, which is how I'm imagining it, you know, even a week's use, um, it still would have had, you know, some dirt on the hinges, scratches, chips, whatever. So, uh, and I've also got to um, do some of all this up here, get some rust on it, get some chipping on it, get it all damaged. I've um, done the beam, I've roughed up the edges of the beam to make it look like it's actually been used and knocked about a bit. Uh, I've also added the, if you can, I don't know if you can see it, in the light, I've added the wood grain effect. If you want to see how that's done, go and look at my um, ambulance videos. That'll show you in there, ambulance part one shows you how I do this wood grain effect and then uh, yeah so that's gonna look nice with some wood effects so that's just going off now and obviously I did these chains that already used when we do the soldering on those brackets so that's just gonna sit on the back as it sit on the back like that isn't it with the chains attached so uh, yeah that'll add a bit of a different color to it and everything but all in all I'm really pleased with it it's, um, it's looking quite bedraggled now. When I started off saying I wanted something which was almost like a light blue and pale yellow, and you know, this is uh, this is getting quite ridiculous now. It's gone quite dark. <laughs> so um, yeah, thanks for watching this part. I'll... Hi everyone, welcome back. Um, Nigel here again. Um, halfway through part sixteen now. I had a bit of a break away from this kit for a couple of days. It's uh, Monday, November the fifth. Guy Fawkes night, bonfire night. Um, yeah, wonderful. I love fireworks. Hmm. I just don't understand why people spend so much money on something they set light to. It goes in the sky, goes boom, pisses off all the neighbours' dogs and cats and scares everyone to death. The crap lands in people's gardens and I don't know. I just don't understand it. Why don't you just? Why don't we limit bloody fireworks to uh, to shows and stuff and stop selling them to the public? It's ridiculous. It's just such a waste of money. It's polluting the atmosphere. It's polluting the ground, and it's just crap. It's just, what what's it all about? I really don't get it. I really don't. I can understand little fireworks for kids. Don't get me wrong, but I just don't understand why people need to have these bloody great fireworks at home that go go in the sky, go boom, flash with pretty lights, and everyone goes, oh wow, you know, Christ Almighty. Oh. Anyway, they probably don't understand why we bolt, we glue bits of plastic together. Um, rant over. So these tracks, they just keep coming back to bite me. I thought I'd finish them. I painted them. I painted them in Tamiya XF84 Dark Iron. It's a lovely paint. See it here. It's um, really, really nice. It gives a very nice finish. You'll be a little bit careful with these tracks because you can end up with bare bits if you don't actually open them up while you're painting them. Because the uh, you can see there where it's got there's one there with a bare bit on it that you can see so you'll be a little bit careful of that so um they'll probably need a touch up after they're fitted because where they go around the uh around here and around here they'll obviously be exposed the rest of this is all just flat so it doesn't matter anyway so yeah the i thought i'd finished and then realized i gotta put these little spuds or whatever they're called on there so um this one's just placed on at the moment you can see the join is here um so yeah um pretty chuffed about how this is looking really i've also painted the tracks for the uh whippet here's the whippet it was um built in just a few hours i'm gonna put, uh, put a base cut on this tonight once the fireworks go i can open the window get the extractor on i'll get the black base on that one so um so yeah i'm gonna paint these now tonight um the uh, dark iron and then let them go off get them on and then uh, well I'll probably put some summer or other inside them before I put them on so they've got some pigment on them but uh or some color should I say so yeah um back later back tomorrow not quite sure uh with an update on on this one but um well on target for having it finished by uh by November the 11th oh and just in case you didn't know if you are in the UK um or actually anywhere in the world you know Peter Jackson has done this amazing video a, a, a re um he's restored a load of footage he had 600 hours of footage or something he's restored it and made it into a, a full color film um and the film is called they shall not grow old and if you're in the uk or if you've got iplayer anywhere in the world this sunday november the 11th 9 30 at night uk time um bbc2 the the program is being filmed 
so I'm really really chuffed I, they they actually had a one night film of it on uh, October the 16th one night only in the cinemas and I was been waiting for I thought it was bound to come out on a DVD for you know for Christmas presents and stuff but no nope, fair play straight to TV no money making straight to TV so um that's going to be worth looking out for so that's this Monday half past nine nine thirty p.m uh Sunday night uh, November the 11th uh what's it called uh, they shall not grow old Peter Jackson's remake of World War One absolutely brilliant don't miss it and there we are tracks painted what I've done I'm trying to add a bit of tonality to this I've painted these these um shoes or whatever they're called if you know what they're called please tell me in the uh in the comments down below but um I know on the old um on the whippet they're called spuds so I guess it's a similar thing so here we go falling apart again um yeah so uh yeah I did them in the uh, XF56 which is like a metallic grey so it just makes them a little bit brighter than the actual track itself and then when I start to weather these and really beat them then I'm hoping to see a little bit of a difference in shade and everything just to add a bit of interest and here we can see them here on the on the tank um, again this wasn't fitted yet I've got, I've got to put a wash on them I think I'm going to use a flory dark dirt wash because the, the beauty of the flory washes is there's no solvents or anything in them um, it's just like a, a clay born in a liquid so you can brush them on leave them to dry remove as much as you like or take it off wet if you want uh, but the beauty is if, if you start to get attack this with um, you know I'm worried even using odorless thinners enamel thinners those little tiny pins that hold these tracks together may well be affected they may just fall apart um, certainly if you start using like enamel thinners or turpentine they're, they're going to disintegrate so you know you have been warned so um, yeah I'm going to use a florally wash on these initially get them all nice and dirty brushed in then brush it all off um, leave quite a bit of it around the inside do some work on the tank around the inside of where the tracks go probably with the floorly wash again and then when I put the tracks on I know that moving forward whatever I do to the outside of them you're never going to see this bright shiny sparkling like you can see here you know there's a bright shiny sparkling where it's all spotless and clean it would never have been like that even like after I don't know 10 minutes in the field it wouldn't have been like that so um so yeah, I'm going to get on with that now and then I'll, I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so I've got the tracks all painted as we saw earlier. They've dried up now. I've got them here laid out on some um, kitchen towel. Interesting to notice they both arc the same way. Uh, obviously these pads are on the outside so these are both actually arcing the same way. Um, so I thought to myself, I'll adjust my jig. And then I thought, well, if it's the jig that's doing it, it would just be the pads that would be on the angle or whatever. Uh, so obviously all the parts that go to make this side, because it's um, two, three, four, five of the part numbers. So if it's two, three, four, five, obviously two and three are a couple of thousand microns shorter than four and five. So obviously it's pulled it in this arc. It does straighten out, but um, yeah, it's funny that, isn't it? They're both exactly the same. So um, I did notice as well on one of the, I think it's scale modeling now or the modeling now or something they built one and they actually built the tracks without a jig and they ended up with the pads all like this you know um, it's just an awful design full stop so I'm gonna put some dark dirt on these um, soak them in it and let it dry overnight and then um, brush it off in the morning um, because I bought this new February 2011 never been used um, this it says pro model that's what flooring models used to be called it's the same stuff I believe I don't think he's changed it at all but basically it's clay um, suspended in solution um, very very good stuff uh, if you want this kind of effect uh, you brush it on you've probably seen his videos if not go online have a look this, the, they're all over the place um, if you've built a model aircraft and you just want to do the panel lines you build a model aircraft paint it camouflage it whatever give it a gloss coat brush this on let it dry and then wipe it off with a cloth or or an old t-shirt an old pair of pants or something um, and the weathering the dirt will just stay in the panel lines if you want to give it a more weathered dirty look then you give it a matte or a satin varnish and this will stick more to the satin varnish 
but if you don't like it, you can wash it off with warm water. The only thing is, I, I bought a pack of these cheap humble brushes um, at uh, Telford a couple of years ago. I think it was like £1.20 for 10 of them. And um, never, ever use an old brush in that pot. If you're going to use brushes for this, dedicate them to this stuff. If you put a brush in there and it's got some acrylic or whatever on it, you can kill it. Um, there has been talk about you can apparently microwave it and it brings it back to life. But if ever you're using this, if I was used just doing a small amount, I would decant some and then throw it away what I don't use. But um, as I'm doing a lot, I want to put this brush straight in the pot. So I make sure I use a brand new brush that hasn't been near anything else. And you always need to give it a really, really good shape because it's basically all the clay will be suspended at the bottom. And I can see there, there's bubbles at the bottom. So I can see I've got no sediment settled in there because they've got bubbles. So um, all you basically do is remove the cap like this. Make sure you don't knock it over. There's lots of bubbles on the top, so that's why it looks a bit of a mess on the, br a mess on the brush. And just literally, just brush it on. And um, I'm gonna put it on quite heavy because I want it to go into all the gaps and everything. The in between the tracks in here doesn't really matter because none of that can be seen. But um, yeah, hopefully it will soak through to the other side. But uh, as you can also see, another advantage with this stuff, it's very, very quick. I mean, it is extremely quick. It just, this is going to take literally five minutes to do these tracks both sides. And then what I'll do then is, um, once this is done, I'll probably do the same to the actual tank itself. And then uh, I think then I'll um, leave it to dry overnight. It's got 11 o'clock now. Work tomorrow. Yay, great. I finish soon. I'm going to be retired soon. Um, so, yeah, I'll uh, leave this to go overnight. And then tomorrow I'll come back on camera again and um, work this off with some cotton buds and show you the effect. Um, I think then I'm going to have to put some pigments on it. You can see that that one's done. You can see how different it looks opposed to the other one. And then uh, I'll just do the other one now. And, uh, it's quite nice doing stuff like this because you can just literally slap it on and um, just leave it. And uh, you know, you don't have to worry about spillage or where it goes because if it goes anywhere you don't want it, like I said earlier, you can just literally wipe it off or wash it off or whatever. So there we go. He does, um, if you check Phil Flory's website, he does a, um, a range of these washes in all different colours and everything. There are there's other brands as well. I think UMP um, do their own. I don't know if they've copied it or, or what, but they've... Uh, they also do washes as well now. I'm not sure if there's any other manufacturers doing it, but um, I think I think Phil was the first. I'm not sure, but it's basically it's just clay. Um, of course, the other thing about it, which is nice, it doesn't smell at all. <laughs> it hardly smells at all. I mean, it just basically smells like like earth, like a dirty puddle, I guess. And I don't really know what a dirty puddle smells like. I don't go around sniffing them. Um, I'll have to let the dog have a sniff, see what she thinks. She likes dirty puddles. So um, I'm going to go off camera now because this is uh, this must be worse than watching paint dry for you guys. So I'll catch you again in the morning. Just a little one here for um, our newer modelers, younger modelers, whatever. They probably won't have seen this before. Uh, this is a pigment um, from MIG Productions. It's called metallic gunmetal and the way this stuff responds will probably quite surprise you if you can imagine these idlers they'd have been going round and the tracks would be worried against them and even if they were in muddy conditions or whatever they would get polished by the rubbing of the steel so what you can do is rather than trying to paint them with a shiny um, shiny material what you can do is get this stuff and you can literally just dab the end of your finger in it You've just got a tiny bit of a finger like that. Watch this. You can rub it on these wheels. 
and it will bring up the edges to look like polished metal and the harder you push and the more you rub the further down it goes and the shinier it gets just get a little bit touch more and it's a really quick way of achieving the um the shiny metal but you must like you like i did then make sure you've got none on your fingers before you put your model up because you will deposit it on there but um yeah hopefully you can see there now that that wheel has got the metallic finish to it on the edge. And you can do it on sprockets as well. And uh, yeah, it works really, really well. So just rub some on there. And just rub it in. And then as I say, go and wash your hands. You don't want to be touching the model with this on your hands. Now I can turn it around. And... I'm not going to chance it. I'm not going to chance putting the sprockets because I'll probably. Oh, go on. I can always get it off later. But you can um, put on the sprockets as well with your finger. Just rub it on. Yeah, I need to use a tool to get in there with that. But um, you can see what I mean. You could just use it, and it gives you that bright metal bright metal finish there you go you see on those on those idlers okay so then guys here we go this is all dry now and I've just placed this over the tank to give you an idea of what it's going to look like um, I won't be doing much more weathering than this before they go on so um yeah I'll be fitting these fitting these on later but uh, yeah, I thought I'd give you an idea of what this, this Frawley wash looks like. And you can see it's quite effective. Um, if you don't rub it off at all, this is what you get. And if you want it more, you just add more. Obviously, it's just simply a base for pigments. So it's just to guarantee that I get some dirt into all the nooks and crannies, which is exactly what it does. It goes into all the nooks and crannies. And on the reverse side, you can see here, again, gone into all the nooks and crannies. Just like that. So, yeah, so uh, to show you what it's like on a, this is on the Whippet tracks. Oops, see these things just fall apart at will. Um, you can see the, the, the dirt deposited on there. It's a really, really wonderful way. If, if you were doing like, um, say this was a roof on a, on a shack or something, you know, you just want to put some dirt on it, just make it look a bit grimy. It's, um, it's good stuff. I enjoy I enjoy using it. I don't use it a lot for the weathering on aircraft and stuff, but you know places like this where it's uh, applicable, I think it's bloody great. And you can also see as well it absolutely dark dries dead flat. So get on the inside. So there we go. That's it for part sixteen. Um, part seventeen is going to consist of obviously fitting the tracks, weathering up, and everything. I also need to get this um, this unditching beam sorted. It's here as you saw before. It's all wood grained and everything. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned. And I think part 17 may be the last. We may do an 18, but um, it's, what is it now? Tuesday, November the 6th. I'm going to try and get this done. Well, I am going to get this done for November the 11th and hopefully the Whippet too. So I'll see you all then. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Please like. Tell your friends. Hit the notification bell. Do everything. Bye.